the name of our Lord Jesus, Lord, we come before you today with thanksgiving and praise. Thank you for sustaining our lives and giving us a new day of life. Thank you that every day this year you have given us your holy word and have fed us with it. How you've grown our spirits in you because of your holy word. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, I pray over the rest of the book of Ecclesiastes that we are going to read today, and that as we meditate on your word, you show us what meaning is. You show us what life is. You show us all the lessons that this book has to offer, your holy book. We thank you for today, June the 20th in the year of our Lord, 2023, and thank you for life once again. We love you and we praise you. And we do this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we all say, Amen. Good morning, everyone, and God bless you. Welcome to The Good Book Project. Here at this channel, in our Chronological Bible in a Year video podcast, we have reached day 171. Yesterday, for day 170, we began the book of Ecclesiastes, reading chapters 1 through 6, which included a sort of overview of the condition of the human spirit and how searching for meaning in things that are not of the Lord bring vanity. For today, day 171, we close out the book of Ecclesiastes, reading chapters 7 through 12. We've already prayed for the word for today, so we will get right into it. Beginning with chapter 7 in the book of Ecclesiastes, and we're going to do this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Word of God reads, Ecclesiastes 7. A good name is better than fine perfume, and the day of death better than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the face the heart is made good. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of, a f of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Surely extortion makes the wise man foolish, and a bribe destroys the understanding. Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Don't be hasty in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Don't say, Why were the former days better than these? For you do not ask wisely about this. Wisdom is as good as an inheritance. Yes, it is more excellent for those who see the sun. For wisdom is a defense even as money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he has made crooked? In the day of prosperity be joyful, and in the day of adversity consider. Yes, God has made the one side by side with the, or the other, to the end that man should not find out anything after him. All this I have seen in my days of vanity. There is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who lives long in his evil doing. Don't be over, overly righteous, neither make yourself overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Don't be too wicked, neither be foolish. Why should you die before your time? It is good that you should take hold of this. Yes, also don't withdraw your hand from that, for he who fears God will come out of them all. Wisdom is a strength to the wise man more than ten rulers who are in a city. Surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and doesn't sin. Also, don't take heed to all the words that are spoken, lest you hear your servant curse you. For often your heart, your own heart, knows that you yourself have likewise cursed others. All this I have proved in wisdom. I said I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which is, 
is far off and exceedingly deep. Who can find it out? I turned around and my heart sought to know and to search out and to seek wisdom and the scheme of things and to know that wickedness is stupidity and that foolishness is madness. I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and traps, whose hands are chains. Whoever pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner will be ensnared by her. Behold, I have found this, says the preacher, to one another to find an explanation, which my soul still seeks, but I have not found it. Found. I have found one man amongst a thousand, but I have not found a woman amongst all those. Behold, I have only found this, that God made mankind upright, but they search for many inventions. Ecclesiastes 8 Who is like the wise man, and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the hardness of his face is changed. I say, keep the king's command, because of the oath to God. Don't be hasty to go out of his presence. Don't persist in an evil thing, for he does whatever he pleases, for the king's word is supreme. Who can say to him, What are you doing? Whoever keeps the commandment shall not come to harm. And his wise heart will know the time and procedure. For there is a time and procedure for every purpose, although the misery of men is heavy on him. For he doesn't know that which will be, for who can tell him how it will be? There is no man who has power over the Spirit to contain the Spirit. Neither does he have power over the day of death. There is no discharge in war, neither shall wickedness deliver those who practice it. All this I have seen, and applied my mind to every work that is done under the sun. There is a time in which one man has power over another to his hurt. So I saw the wicked buried. Indeed, they came also from holiness. They went and were forgotten in the city where they did this. This also is vanity, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner commits crimes a hundred times and lives long, yet surely I know that it will be better with those who fear God, who are reverent before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he lengthen days like a shadow, because he doesn't fear God. There is a vanity which is done on the earth, that there are righteous men to whom it happens according to the work of the wicked. Again, there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Then I commended mirth, because a man has no better thing under the sun than to eat, to drink, and to be joyful for that will accompany him in his labor all the days of his life which God has given him under the sun. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the busyness that is done on the earth, even though eyes see no sleep day or night, then I saw all the work of God. That man can't find out the work that is done under the sun. Because whoever much a man labors to seek it out, yet he won't find it. Yes, even though a wise man thinks he can comprehend it, he won't be able to find it. Ecclesiastes 9 For all this I laid to my heart, even to explore all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. Whether it is love or hatred, man doesn't know it. All is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good, to the clean, to the unclean, to him who sacrifices, and to him who doesn't sacrifice. As is the good, so is the sinner. He who takes an oath, as he who fears an oath. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun. 
that there is one event to all. Yes, also, the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart, while they live, and after that they go to the dead. For to him is joined, with all the living there is hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead don't know anything, neither do they have any more re a reward, for their memory is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, and their envy has perished long ago. Neither do they any longer have a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Go your way, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already accepted your works. Let your garments be always white, and don't let your head lack oil. Live joyfully with the wife whom you love all the days of your life of vanity, which he has given you under the sun, all your days of vanity, for that is your portion in life and in your labor in which you labor under the sun. Whatever your hands finds, your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work nor plan, nor knowledge nor wisdom in Sheol where you are going. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not with the swift, to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. For man also doesn't know his time, as the fish that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds are caught that are caught in the snare, even so are the sons of men snared in an evil time, when it falls suddenly on them. I also have seen wisdom under the sun in this way, and it seemed great to me. There was a little city and few men within it, and a great king came against it, besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. Now a poor wise man was found in it, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then I said, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The words of the wise heard in quiet are better than the cry of him who rules amongst fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. Ecclesiastes 10. Dead flies cause the oil of the perfumer to produce an evil odor. So does a little folly outweigh wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Yes, also when the fool walks by the way, his understanding fails him, and he says to everyone that he is a fool. If the spirit of the ruler rises up against you, don't leave your place. For gentleness lays great offenses to rest. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, the sort of error which proceeds from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in a low place. I have seen servants on horses and princes walking like servants on the earth. He who digs a pit may fall into it, and whoever breaks through a wall may be bitten by a snake. Whoever carves out stones may be injured by them. Whoever splits wood may be endangered by it. If the axe is blunt and one doesn't sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, but skill brings success. If the snake bites before it is charmed, then there is no profit for the charmer's tongue. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but a fool is swallowed by his own lips. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. A fool also multiplies words. Man doesn't know what will be, and that which will be after him. Who can tell him? The labor of fools wearies every one of them, he, for he doesn't know how to go to the city. Woe to you, land, when your king is a child, and your princes eat in the morning. Happy are you, land, when your king is the son of nobles, and your princes eat in due season. For strength 
and not for drunkenness. By slothfulness the roof sinks in, and through idleness of the hands the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes the life glad, and money is the answer for all things. Don't curse the king, no, not in your thoughts, and don't curse the rich in your bedroom, for a bird of the sky may carry your voice, and that which has wings may tell the matter. Ecclesiastes 11 Cast your bread on the waters, for you shall find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, yes, even to eight, for you don't know what evil will be on the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And if a tree falls towards the south or towards the north, in the place where the tree falls, there shall it be. He who observes the wind won't sow and he who regards the clouds won't reap. As you don't know what is the way of the wind, nor how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, even so you don't know the work of God who does all. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening don't withhold your hand, for you don't know which will prosper, whether this or that, or whether they both will be equally good. Truly the light is sweet, and it is a pleasant thing for the eyes to see the sun. Yes, if a man lives many years, let him rejoice in them all. But let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that comes is vanity. Rejoice, young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth, and walk in the ways of your heart, and in the sight of of your eyes, and know that for all thing, all these things God will bring you into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from your heart, and put away evil from your flesh, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Ecclesiastes 12 Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw near, when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun, the light, the moon, and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few and those who look out of the windows are darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low, and one shall rise up at the voice of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Yes, they shall be afraid of heights, and terrors will be on the way, and the almond tree shall blossom, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail because man goes to his everlasting home, and the mourners go about the streets, before the silver cord is severed, or the golden bow is broken, or the pitcher is broken at the spring, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. Further, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered, sought out, and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written blamelessly, words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and like nails well fastened are words from the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. Furthermore, my son, be admonished, of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. This is the end of the matter. All has been heard. Fear God, and keep His commandments, for this is the duty, the whole duty, of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, with every hidden thing, 
whether it is good or whether it is evil. Thank you, God, for your holy word. Now we see an echo of yesterday, the preacher in the book of Ecclesiastes, about how everything is vanity. He goes on to expand in this reading that we read at the end that things that are supposed to be good can end up bad, and things that are bad that are not supposed to end up good can end up good. This is not for us to understand. This is only for us to experience. This whole book has the human condition written all over it about trying to find meaning in things, trying to find meaning in anything that makes sense, that good should equal good and bad will equal bad. But the preacher goes along to say that sometimes it doesn't work out this way. But throughout the whole reading we read today, the echo comes back to continue to focus on the Lord, continue to focus on his good things, because he will set the path straight. Now, because this book is just like we have read some that go into sections just like Proverbs and others that are more narrative, when it comes to the vanity parts, I encourage everyone to listen to, to yesterday's podcast and today's podcast together so you can hear the entire book of Ecclesiastes and really study it verse by verse, to get the whole context of what the book of Ecclesiastes is about. And if I have, with yesterday's study and today's, life may be vanity, but the end of the book of Ecclesiastes gives us a really good picture of how we should look towards this book. I will begin Ecclesiastes chapter 12, begin with verse 10. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written blamelessly, words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and like nails well fastened are words from the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. Furthermore, my son, be admonished. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. This is the end of the matter. All has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of men. For God will bring every work into judgment with every hidden thing, whether it is good or whether it is evil. The preacher is telling us that in terms of the, end, the study of life, the study of meaning, you will never end. It will be a constant going and a constant study with no answer at the end of the question, but focus on the Lord. Listen and follow all of his commandments with a humble heart. And in the end, everything will be brought up by the Lord for judgment. If we don't see it now, eventually the Lord always sees everything. And with that, the book of Ecclesiastes is complete along with day 171 in our podcast. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and please share this with anyone on any and all of your social medias so that we could get the word of God, just like the book of Ecclesiastes, out to as many people as possible. And I encourage you to listen to these two episodes together so that you can keep hearing the book of Ecclesiastes. This is the book of understanding that you'll get in one passage. I know myself, I will be studying the book deeply, and I hope and encourage all of you to do the same. I will pray us out of the word for today, and we will go throughout the rest of our day. Lord, we praise you and we give you thanks once again, because in the end, you see everything. Whether hidden or whether out, you see all. Whether sometimes we think things are fair, all work for your good. All work in your perfect order, even when we don't see things. Lord, give us understanding in those moments when we don't understand, when we think things aren't fair, and remind us that you have the entire world in your perfect hand. Life may be vain, but you are forever, and you give us life through forever, through your Holy Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We eternally are grateful for that. Lord, I pray over the rest of today, and that you use it to bless us, and that we can be a blessing to others. 
Keep the book of Ecclesiastes on our minds, Lord, as we continue on through the day to really understand what you are trying to tell us in this book. Keep us on your straight path. Keep us on your perfect path for each and every single one of our lives, filled with the Holy Spirit and ever so ready to tell the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your sustaining power over our lives. Drop the scales from our eyes to see how you want us to see, to see us how you see us. To live a life of humble humbleness, to live a life of graciousness, to live a life like you. We ask for all these things in the mighty and saving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. Day 172 is tomorrow, and I can't wait for you to return for it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace. Peace.